Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I want to thank my colleagues for their contribution, for their contribution, Mr. Speaker, and I am happy of the responses from the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, particularly the, the, the women of this country who are extremely delighted, Mr. Speaker. And it is these small things, Mr. Speaker, that, that mean a lot to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And you see, Mr. Speaker, why is the leader of the opposition is liming somewhere in the world? Mm -hmm. Instead of staying here and representing the people of Miku South, who elected him, Mr. Speaker, after he was defeated in Sufre, he is somewhere in the world on Facebook, he and his hats criticizing the actions of the government in removing VAT on period items. And all the people who to understand that, Mr. Speaker, in, so, instead of staying here and defending his cause, instead of staying there and representing the members of the United Workers' Party, instead of staying here and representing the people of Miku South, he's left his hacks to go on Facebook and shamelessly, be under the cover of no name, attack people personally, attack people who are just making their contribution just to frighten people from not speaking up for what is right, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I can tell them, writing on Facebook, attacking people personally, peddling lies and misinformation, will not stop the people of St. Lucia from seeing the truth and supporting this government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you may recall, you may recall, during the last session, when I was in opposition, I made a, predicament, a pre prediction. I said, you can win an election with lies, but you cannot run a country with lies. You may you remember I said so? I said so all the time. You can win an election if lies, but you cannot run a country if lies. They lied and they won the election. They lied and they run the country. Now they lost the election and they're still lying. The lying is just part of the DNA of the opposition. They cannot help themselves. And even though somebody is the staunch defender once the person goes offline they, once the person be, once they believe the person goes offline they attack the person mr speaker bradley look out that's true mr speaker it's you can take offense i'm sorry if you take offense if if, if the cap doesn't fit you know right but the point i'm making is um remember for sure don't you follow this this facebook postings I know people who were called because they said favor, said favor by the government. They were called and they were chastised. I know people who were called privately and chastised because they go in the public domain and they're not profitable by the government. But Mr. Speaker, I've said to them, they can attack me from now till tomorrow, till daylight, till sunset. What they cannot do, what they cannot do, is make the people of Castries East ever, ever, ever turn against me for my representation, Mr. Speaker. And now they have a new trend. Some people who live in Barbono and in Carelli and up north, they call a station. I'm from Castries East. I'm from Castries East. And the Prime Minister, and we don't see him. We, there's a road that, that we have fixed. And this and, that, and what Pierre doing? Yeah. You, you, you know what they live in currently? <laughs> yes. You know, Mr. Mr. They have they, you know, they, they live up north. They live in Grosse Lake, but they call in. I'm from Cassius East. This is because I have a walk. This is because, you know, I'm so proud of this in Cassius East. I love them so. I love them dearly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. No matter who they run against me. Some of them have hair, some of them have none, some of them, hair. Some of them, 
<laughs> Mr. Speaker, they, they come in and you they, they're not giving up, you know. They refuse to give up. They refuse. So now the, the, the new thing is that you call from anywhere in the island and say, I'm calling from Marchand. You know, I vote for Pierre in Marchand and Pierre doing nothing. Come down see other. <laughs> So, Mr. Speaker, the more they attack me, the stronger I get, the more convicted that I feel about the policies of this government, Mr. Speaker. And that is one of the examples, Mr. Speaker. That's one of the examples, Mr. Speaker. Because these men and women, Mr. Speaker, we share one thing in common. We want to see the advancement of the people of St. Lucia. And Mr. Speaker, this, these resolutions we've passed this morning is a manifestation of that, Mr. Speaker. We've helped the business, we've helped the business people in that we've removed the interest on the VAT. We've helped regional people, we've zero rated, we've taken out VAT on aircraft. And Mr. Speaker, ask you for an amendment so that we can help, we can remove the VAT on, for sea travel. For, 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 as your, your, you made a, you made a very good, you see, I tell you, you're not supposed to be there, you know. Because, you know, sometimes you have very good ideas. You know, that, that's a very good idea, which I've taken. But you know, you, you're in the bad company. <laughs> <laughs> and I've told you that so many times before. I've told you that so many times before. As a member for Castro's North, he agrees. You're in bad company. So, Mr. Minister of Finance, it's your intention to amend yes. the resolution? I, I would like to. Can I? You wish to do it now? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I can. If you, well, I would, if um, you are so graceful. You can do it because on the standing order 31 3, you can make any amendment to a resolution between the time I propose the question, between the time I put the question and the time I propose it. I have already put the question not yet proposed it. So you can make the amendment now, but it has to be seconded by somebody. Okay, Mr. thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Thanks for your guidance, Mr. Speaker. I am so guided, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, be on page three. About aircraft and, and water. Mr. Speaker? Yes. Be, and it says the least of the purchase or lease of an aircraft and watercraft. And watercraft. And watercraft for local and regional travel. And or huh? for local and regional travel, yes. Sir. No, and or, and or, or, or aircraft. Or, or, or watercraft. Or watercraft. And aircraft, Mr. Speaker? Or watercraft. Or. The same thing. For a period of two years, commencing from second day of August 2023, and on the first day of August 2025, the purchase or lease of an aircraft or watercraft, or watercraft, or watercraft, yeah, after aircraft, yeah. Speaker, I second the amendment which has been made by the. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance. Mm -hmm. Now for the question that and now for the question that B be amended to read in the case of Schedule 3 as an exempt import for a period of two years commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, the purchase or lease of an aircraft or watercraft and re for local and regional travel. And now for the question, as many as that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of a country opinion say no. Then the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Please continue, Minister of Finance. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Member. I mean, Mr. Speaker, that is the kind of that is where this government is coming from. We, so we don't agree all the time with the member for Chozel on certain issues of policy. 
he has his opinion, we have ours. But when he, when he makes a good point, Mr. Speaker, and as is, that's what we are all about. We understand that. So we support it, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> That's what we are doing. Value added tax number or penalties of. But I face it with that the next time. No, no, no that's, no, no. that's the amendment here. To give you the power to do it. But I did it for. It's the same thing I did for. To give you the authority for the resolution. Thank you very much. Mrs. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, so we, I just to say, Mr. Speaker, this this um, resolution, Mr. Speaker, it dealt, it also dealt with a pressing need in in the regional in the regional market now, the need for air and sea travel. So what we're saying is, if there are a group of investors who want to go in the business of air charter, of chartered airlines, they now can get a relief. In that we remove VAT on 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 the on the on aircraft, Mr. Speaker. And if they want to go in the business of watercraft, moving goods or moving goods or people, then they get relief, Mr. Speaker. So this realization is is encompassing. And plus the fact we've dealt with St. Jude for this resolution, and we've dealt with the World Bank and the resurfacing of the airport, Mr. Speaker. So by this simple resolution, Mr. Speaker, we have been able in one sitting to change lives for the many people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, just by this sitting. So, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, that is what government is all about, Mr. Speaker. And what would have been better if the opposition would have given, would have discussed these issues with us, if the opposition would have encouraged the people of St. Lucia to take the benefits of this resolution to improve their quality of life, Mr. Speaker. That would have been better, but no, Mr. Speaker. The hatred, the envy, Mr. Speaker, the misinformation, particularly the hatred that pervades the opposition towards the members of this government, Mr. Speaker. It is, they cannot, they cannot, for one moment, support anything that is done by this government. Not for one, I remember, Mr. Speaker, we were in opposition too, Mr. Speaker, and we came in this honorable house, and I remember when the member for Chozel was Minister of Commerce, he came to the parliament with a bill to give incentives to small businesses, Mr. Speaker. And we stood in the parliament and we supported that piece of legislation because we thought it was good for small businesses, Mr. Speaker. There are several things during, during COVID, Mr. Speaker, and they like to speak about, uh, about COVID. And I remember the member from, from Castro South making a point that fundamentally he disagrees with what is happening. But because of the circumstances, because of the circumstances I, that we, he will support the measures taken up, up, around about COVID. But you know what they do, Mr. Speaker? Instead of saying that, Instead of saying that the opposition supported it, Mr. Speaker, you know what they said? I said I'll give everybody $1,500. And I've asked them, and Mr. Speaker, these guys lie so blatant. And I've asked them, play the tape that said I said so. Nobody can bring that tape. No one can bring the tape where I said that I'll give everybody $1,500. But they peddle it. And in typical Gobel style, if you say a lie long enough, people are going to believe you. That's what again bothers me, Mr. Speaker. Attacking people, private people, in their own lives. People can't go on holiday. People can't go on holiday unless they attack them. People can't take their own earnings and go on holiday. People, I was... <laughs> I mean, people can't buy. I was vilified because they said I own a BMW. I mean, that is where we've reached. That is where we've reached in this country, Mr. Speaker. That's where, because the idea is I'm not entitled. 
Am I entitled uh, not to be the Prime Minister of St. Lucia? Because I'm not entitled. That, that, that's a question. And many of, of, that, of that opposition, Mr. Speaker, to these resolutions is because, and I make no bones about it, is because of self-hate. Some people do not like themselves to the extent that they don't have the confidence in themselves to attain the heights of their capabilities and their abilities, Mr. Speaker. So instead of that, they, in, they prefer to attack. Mr. Speaker, there's not been one policy of this government for the last two years that the opposition has criticized in a constructive way. Not one. Not one, Mr. Speaker. Anything we do, instead of dealing with the issues, and you will see it in the 2.5 levy that we're going to be, be, be going to we're going to be discussing in a while. Anything we do, there's in the VAT Act, all the good things that at least the member for Castro Central has spoken, the member for Labria has spoken about, the member for Babylon, all the good things in that act. They found nothing about it that's good. But instead, you attack the press secretary. Diversion. You attack the press secretary. You know why? You attack Mr. Speaker? Because you believe you believe that she is promoting the government's policies of the removal of VAT on building materials and on women products, some of them, Mr. Speaker. So you attack her. You know why? To put her off, to send her off, Mr. Speaker, because you don't want the women of St. Lucia to know that this government has done something for the women of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So that is the tactic. Diversion, diversion, Mr. Speaker. But I can tell you, they can write on Facebook till their fingers hurt them. But the finger that will matter is when the people put the finger in the ink on election day. That's the finger. The one on ink, the ink on election day. That's the finger, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank the members. I thank the public. I thank the public for the way they have been supporting this government, Mr. Speaker. I really thank them. Because if you listen, and that is why what they're trying to stir, the discontent that, that they're trying to stir, the blaming us for crime, the bl the, the, that's what they're trying to stir. It, it's not going anywhere. Because the public of St. Lucia understand. And I thank them for that. They understand, Mr. Speaker. They understand that we are living in difficult times. They understand that the war, and I heard some people speaking the other day, and very simple people, and they were saying, they were speaking about the, the cluster bombs that the Ukraine government, the Americans give the Ukraine government. And they were saying, very simple language, Mekwe la gestala tika fini. You see how they understand, Mrs. Speaker? You see how they understand? They understand, Mrs. Speaker. So, Mrs. Speaker, we in, this gov we in the government, Mrs. Speaker, we are very, very satisfied with the responses of the people of St. Lucia. We are satisfied with the way the business sector has begun to expand. The way the business sector employment is increasing, and soon from now, Mr. Speaker, you will hear when the employment figures came out, the leader of, of, of the opposition he attacked the figures. The leader of the opposition attacked the solutions economic growth. The leader of the opposition attacked the social economic review. <laughs> Even in the face of I, I, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition said that we should reduce the price of fuel. He does, he does not even know that fuel has come down over the last period. It has come down to 16.50 now, Mr. Speaker. The same, the same man who put a dollar fifty on fuel, you know. The same guy who said he had a lockbox to put the 150. Up to now, I cannot find the key for the lockbox. 
what now? Where is the dollar fifty? And, you, and, we, and we pretend to forget these things. You need to take the heavy money and put it in a separate account. <laughs> Where is the lockbox? And that is why they want to silence me. Where is the lockbox? You, you promised the people of St. Lucia that you take a dollar fifty on every gallon of gas and put in a lockbox. Where is that lockbox, Mr. Speaker? These are the facts. Answer that question. Me question. Weapon Lee. Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. I rest my case and I thank members.